Hi everybody, welcome to Mike's Classic Auto World. I'm here with Hank, the owner of this beautiful 1961 Chrysler 300G Coupe. This car is 100% original. Original paint, original interior, original chrome. Uh, this car is an AACA preservation car. Um, it's been judged as 100% original. And Hank's going to tell us a little bit about the car. So Mike, um, um, you said it really that these are really low production cars to begin with. They only made 1,280 of these in 1961. That's a really low number okay. for, uh, for an American production car. The uh, Chrysler 300 Club um, says, and I'm not necessarily saying it's 100% correct, but they say that 445 survived. And of those that survived, I don't know, it would be pretty hard to find a better survivor. Yes. Know, uh, this black's a really tough color. And, uh, and here we have it. So this was called the Beautiful Brute, right? Because uh, of uh, the power behind the car. Uh, and uh, this was really Chrysler's engineering specialty car. So it has um, the heaviest duty everything. Largest, uh, highest horsepower of any 1961 automobile. Um, stiffest suspension, better brakes, incredible interior really. Four, four bucket seats. That's, that's the original leather from 1961. Wow. Uh, and the door panels, headliner dash, the uh, full length console, um, vacuum gauge, all of that is all original from 19. 61, which is, I think, uh, to me, pretty impressive. It's very impressive. These cars usually had really, uh, they had good care, but they really were run hard because of the type of cars they yeah. were. Um, dual swivel bucket seats. Um, these work really well. I think they work well because they're the original, but they have a little spring to them. They've never been taken yeah, apart? Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, well, actually, you know what? I maybe over-oiled them, <laughs> but... Um, it, it really, um, they really, they really swing out. It's raining down leaves today. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful anyway, fall day yeah, and it's, it's, it's a really cool car. It's leaves going inside the interior. About 100,000 miles on it, believe it or not. Really? That's not much. Well, it's not much, but it's in really good shape. It's yeah. It's got 100,000 miles on it. So, so it's, um. It's got that beautiful dash. It's a neat car. Yeah. Love the gauges. Now all of them had the same interior, all all 300 Gs. It, okay. But you'll see out there once in a while you'll see one with maybe a black interior, or it'll be painted a non-standard color. If that's the case on the data plate, which is right in the jam, it'll be stamped with a special code that'll tell you that they were a special ordered interior. So okay. I've seen there's a there's a red convertible with a plus, plain black interior several other combinations. You've got the 300 uh, emblem there between yeah. the seats, which is really neat. Yeah, it's really cool the way they did that with a, against a big piece of carpet. It's a big car, but it only seats four. How about that? Yeah. Four very comfortably, though. No seat belts. Oh, how about that? So you better hang on to something. <laughs> Was that optional in this car, or did they even offer it? I don't know. You know, that's a good question. I really can't tell you. I've never seen them with seat belts, but that doesn't mean you couldn't get them. I mean, they weren't standard on, uh, yeah. I don't think, any car up no, until a no, certain but point. You know, a dealer would install anything yeah. if you paid them enough. True. The dash looks amazing. All the instruments are shiny and the glass is clear and everything looks beautiful in here. Yeah, well, we, we did use a lot of 4 steel wool cleaning it all up. Pull out, press down. Yep, that's for the emergency brake with no park. Okay. What is this here, Hank? Oh, that's, that's the mirror. Oh, that's for the mirror? Yeah, the remote control mirror out on the fender. How about that? This doesn't have a right-hand mirror. I wish it did. Wow. It's that's got the uh, mirror on the dash. Yeah, and the dash pad's in beautiful shape. For it is. Car. This car must have been garaged for most of its life. Well, it was, I'll tell you, much it was owned by a guy who had his own newspaper, um, um, a, a sports car newspaper, and uh, he drove this around to all the races. Uh, 
it spent more than its time in the pits, right next to the track. Okay. Uh, so uh, it was basically a one-owner car for most of its life. When he died, his son got it, and uh, eventually his son ended up living in it. Really? And uh, tried to hang on to it, but lost it to um, an overdue motel bill. So, <laughs> sad, wow. It's a sad story, really. And then yeah. uh, that's why it's got the U.S. Uh, Auto Club stickers on the window and the Indy, Indy uh, Speedway sticker on the rear quarter window. Uh, is there a name for that uh, steering wheel? It's no, glass, is it like not, not loose side? Is it plastic? Yeah, it's a, it's a translucent plastic. Translucent? It's, it's, if, you re, if you restored it, it would be clear. It's yellowed from UV light and age. Yeah. You know, I, I, I look for little things like that. It validates the originality of the car. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the original yeah. wheel. I have a restored G convertible in white and... Uh, and that's the way that steering wheel is. It's totally clear. It looks perfect. Yes. I'm going to walk around this car. It's got the unique wheel covers. Yeah, 300G only. Wow. Although Chrysler used those later in 66 when they, they came out with power, power disc brakes because they went to a 15-inch wheel for power disc brakes in 66. And they didn't have a wheel cover. So they dragged these out, right? Same exact wheel cover, except in here it says power disc brakes instead of being painted red. Okay. So uh, they reappeared. Now the chrome on this is all original, and I don't know if you can tell at home. It's It's got a little patina to it. It shines very well. But there's a little, just a little bit of fading in here. It kind of validates the age. But you'd expect that for a car of this age. And Hank was showing me earlier the seam here. The leaded seam where they uh, connected the body panels. You won't find that on a restored car. No, you won't. He also pointed out this side over here was done much better right. by a different guy. Different guy on the <laughs> other side of the assembly line. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I think it's kind of neat. Yeah. Now, now right, it doesn't look like that in 61, obviously. Yeah, time does that, age. Right. right. Another one of those little things you look for that validates uh, the patina, that just, validates just like the car. Us, you know, yeah? Right. You expect some crow's feet around your eyes, right, right. when you get our age. much better when we were younger. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little write-up here, 61 Chrysler 300G Coupe. Yeah, that gives you all the specifics. The former previous owner did that. I think it's really well done. Yes. He did a nice job on that. Pretty much everything you need to know. Yep. 300G. Yeah, let's open the hood. The hood's, yeah. the hood's the fun part. Oh, the United States uh, Auto Club. Yeah. What's the story on that? Well, the, the fellow that owned, a, that, that owned the car published his own motorsports newspaper and he went to all the races. Oh. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a 413 right. Cross Ram. Correct. Right. V8. And if I'm not mistaken, the distance of these runners are actually, uh, there's a reason for that distance. Well, it's like free well, supercharger. Yes. Right, it's taking the, it's taking the... Um, it's not a supercharger, but it sort of acts as a supercharger well, it does. in certain it's RPM a ranges. supercharger without a belt, really. You okay. Know? Um, um, uh, base, basically. Um, so so it, it gives the car uh, basically an extra jolt, you know. Um, with the, the air movement back and forth between the carbs. And uh, the other point, of course, is that instead of being in line, the carbs are horizontally across from one another. And with any moldy carbureted car, whether it's dual quads, you know, six pack, you've seen those, right? Yes. Trips, Pontiac called them trips, Chrysler called them a six pack, same thing, three, two barrels. And you always have a primary carburetor. So on the trips, right, it's the center carburetor, center two barrel that you run off of until you dump the other two, okay? Yeah. With, with dual quads, you run off the back carburetor and it's the back two barrel off the back carburetor that you use to start the car and yeah. normally drive. So with this, it's totally different because you can't do it that way. You're always using both carburetors. You need both carburetors. So yeah. as soon as you start the car and put your foot on the accelerator, you're using the back two barrel out of both of these carburetors. So you've got, there's, you have to be <clears throat> ready because stuff starts happening right away. You know? <laughs> so if you really step on it, um, 
it it takes off yeah you know i mean it's 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 uh that's the beautiful brute right? there's no yeah there's no turbo lag you know um there's no supercharging whistle it's just all of a sudden you better have both hands on the wheel and and be ready yeah it's it's a it's a powerful car i mean a really powerful car and they weren't they weren't kidding around with these I, i'm surprised they actually ever put them into production like this they only did this for two years 60 and 61 okay 62 with the h um, they went back to a uh, dual quad setup, same horsepower, 380, which is a lot of ponies um, uh, for these. And uh, I think the uh, I think this is rated at 275. The H is rated at 380. It's I'm mean, five five horsepower, so. And there goes the AAC uh, preservation of them. Yeah, right. 300G. Yeah. I, which, I, that's a great. That's one of the best programs the AACA has. I think, yeah. Frankly. I mean, it's really well, it's an amazing car to, to, to be yeah, in this really condition. How they were. So if you're yeah. trying to restore one, you need a reference point on how they actually were back in the day. The parking lights in the corner there with the bumper. Yeah, that yeah. This is actually a one-piece bumper. Yeah. It surprises call, me. They call this the smiling face. Were they all one-piece? The yeah. Even Price the DeSotos, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, the only multi-piece bumper was on Imperial. Okay. Um, so, so in s up to 60, including 60, this trapezoidal grill is upside down. It's turned the other way. So if you look at a 300 C, D, E, or F, the wide piece is at the bottom. They flipped it around in 61, and they nicknamed was the smiling face because it looks like it's smiling at you. So that's the Chrysler. Yeah, that's the smile. Well, it's a beautiful car. It's, it's, smi it's smiling at you while it's gobbling. The <laughs> while it's gobbling the highway. It's nice to see an original, a truly original one. Thank you, Hank, very much.